Today we're going to be discussing all of the books that I read in April. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and reviews. So first of all, let's get into the stats. I read 11 books in the month of April, equivalent to 3,199 pages. Splitting that up into format, I read all physical books this month, and which is very bizarre for me. Then splitting that up into rating, I had two three stars, one 3.5 stars, seven four stars, and then one 4.5 stars. So let's get into all of the books, my thoughts, my themes, and reviews. Grab yourself your most warming hot drink, a cozy blanket, and settle in, and let's talk books. So beginning with my three stars, first of all, I have Awesome by Ali Smith. And the themes that I wrote down for this one include friendship, beautiful prose, commentary on politics and impact, multi-timeline and a touch of whimsy. In terms of my overall thoughts of this book, I thought it was an interesting read and I did quite like the characters but I was left feeling a bit old at the end. I feel like it's a very unforgettable read but I feel like because I didn't understand the main driver of this book or the main point behind it, I will just forget about it and I feel like there was a bit of lost communication between me and the book in terms of actually knowing what was happening and what was going on and the purpose of the read. Um, I feel like, like I said, the writing was beautiful and the characters were great but just the story itself lost me. Perhaps a reread might do in the future but for now a three star rating from me. Then moving on to my next three star read is The Hollow Heart. This is the second book to The Midnight Lie and this had themes of gods, magic, sapphic, toxic love and secrets. Now I feel as though this book drags so much and the multiple POVs in the first book really helped guide the story and kept it fun and entertaining and interesting but the multiple POVs in this book just felt like it dragged on the story and I feel like if you took this hollow heart and you took this red light line you just combined them it would make a better bigger standalone than two individual reads. I just didn't really enjoy this sequel sadly and I don't necessarily recommend it. I wish that I kind of had just read them back to back and kind of calculated it as a one big standalone read in my head. If those themes do sound interesting to you perhaps you check out this duology because you might enjoy it because I had fun with the storyline and I thought it was a really interesting concept but the execution for me fell a bit flat. Just jumping in because I completely forgot to mention my 3.5 star read which was Patricia Wants to Cuddle and the themes that included in this was cult-like, a small town, it had a reality tv show and it was split into multiple formats that included different POVs from the people on the reality tv show including the production people, also it had kind of reddit thought forums or kind of chats to do with the reality tv show then it also had a format of blog page so it was very multi-formatted in that respect then it was very unhinged it had a lot of dark elements in there very graphic and gory i did not know this and i was kind of screamish at it and then it had this mystery element woven through now i thought this was an okay read i don't tend to like reality tv shows or anything to do with that so i wasn't a huge fan of that element and how the book wrapped up but I was also very confused um, but I was just there for a wild good ride and that I had so I recommend if any of those scenes do sound interesting to you. Moving on to my four star reads first of all we have I am a fan now this had themes social media obsession society a commentary piece rather than plot moving forward a toxic relationships unknown and un unnamed characters and then a stream of consciousness writing style now I really enjoyed this book it was short it packed a punch I love the fact that the characters were unnamed and unknown and even our narrator we had no idea who that was and it just had so many good little tidbits in it and it didn't move forward it was just that story about obsession and social media I feel as though if you're reading it for a plot purpose you will not enjoy this book and either than a character purpose you won't enjoy it I think if you just go along with it to go for the ride and just follow this narrator's head and the situation that they're in then that's when you'll love it the most and I feel like that's why I enjoyed it so much so I definitely recommend that one. Next up on my four star reads we have Earthling in which had themes of childhood trauma, society, dark and disturbing and a bit of aspect of magical realism woven in there I feel like. Now I had such a good time with this book actually I feel like a good time is really horrible to say because it was filled with such trauma and such raw and real emotions and the trauma was very 
in depth and very focused in and very obvious and I feel as though you definitely need to check the trigger warnings for this book um but I feel like the way that it was played and the way that it was told made it feel like otherworldly and it just really worked with the plot and I don't want to say too much because I feel like if you go into this book blind that is when you'll love it the most I didn't know that there are trigger warnings in this book so I kind of just wanted to highlight that here but I really did have a good time with this book in terms of the writing in terms of how it explains and went through trauma and dealt with that the characters the plethora of the characters as well the world it just felt great it was superbly done superbly written and I definitely want to check out Convenience Store Woman by the same author because I've had equally good reviews for that one next up we have The Burnout as a four star read now this had themes of death of a loved one a small town childhood strangers to lovers healing and burnout learning to enjoy life again funny silly characters and cringe in the best possible way I had a really good time with this book I thought it was so much fun I couldn't stop reading it I just I thought it was like a typical romance in the best way possible and it made me smile there was a little bit of mystery going on and a little bit of puzzle piecing and it just felt very fun very light-hearted very fresh and I just loved the characters they were all so different and so quirky and they had their different roles to play and feel as though that was executed beautifully and yes just the scenery as well I feel like this was such a lovely read and I definitely recommend it Speaking of romances, next up we have The Catch in which again I really enjoyed. This had themes of death of a loved one, small town, family, a grumpy protective male love interest, social media influences and fake engagement. Now again this one was a joy. It follows kind of similar themes as Burnout I suppose um, but I really really enjoyed it. Again it was a, just a typical romance but just the elements and the characters and the setting was what made it so superb and so so lovely and I do recommend it. I feel like if you're looking for a palette cleanser or you're looking for something just to get your head stuck into and immerse in and read and just smile then this is a book for you. Then we have a book that has been on my TBR for the longest time in terms of wish list not in terms of own TBR and that is I Want Today But I Want to Eat to Bucky. I didn't realise that this was part memoir. I didn't realise that it was part sort of non-fiction and talks with therapists and I really enjoyed the format of this book. Now this had themes of being a memoir, self-help slash conversations with the therapist, mental health and then broken down into themes and formatting varieties. So I really enjoyed that element of it. I felt that was something just fresh and great and how raw and real it felt and how kind of alienated our main character did feel but you felt, well at least I did, like you could resonate with the characters because it was such raw and real and actuality emotions that was going on despite them feeling quite alienated and I thought this book was just fab it was really really small really easy to speed through and get through but I definitely think it's a kind of book that you can revisit and reread and get more and more things out of it each time you kind of pick up pieces that you left behind last time and yeah I really did enjoy this book I thought it was a solid read and I definitely recommend it then we have a book that helps me get out of a mini slump and that is The League of Gentlewomen Witches I have the second story up here as well to this series which I definitely want to get to but this had themes of silly and unserious, historical writing with modern elements, rivals between pirates and witches, action adventures and battles, Jane Austen style romance and what a joy this book was. It was the perfect mix for me between fantasy and romance and set in real world and there was witches and there was flying houses and pirates and it all felt so silly and unserious with these different themes being discussed in there as well I feel like it was superbly done I absolutely adored it I had so much fun with it it gives me a huge smile on my face just thinking about it and I definitely want to progress to the second installment in this series um I highly highly recommend it if any of those themes do sound interesting to you then we have the vegetarian in which was the bunnies book club pick for the month of April the themes I have listed down are dreams eating meat self-harm slash eating disorders magical realism families and childhood traumas and this book 
like blew me away it is so tiny but it packs a huge punch i loved the non-linear timeline because it keeps you intrigued and invested and i also like the fact that it was split into three parts and we had three different narratives from the different family of the protagonist that this was involving and i felt like getting their perspective and their point of view was really intriguing and investing as well because you kind of got to see like a whole round pov rather than just one person or one narrative the character development and exploration was fantastic and amazing and i just thought this book was phenomenal of course there are triggers for it so please do check those out but if those themes do sound interesting to you then i highly recommend this read and i had so much fun reading it and then once you've read it go and watch my spoiler filled vlog for the bunnies book club pick where i read vlog and discuss spoilers so that was the end of my four star reads moving on to the last book that i have to discuss with you today and my 4.5 star read and that was bloom so this book my goodness i think it's one of my favorite books of all time now just purely because it is everything i love in a book at the moment there's had themes of being sapphic horror obsession unhinged women and i would categorize it as in the weird lick fic genre or sub genre i thought it was amazing it started off as this sort of normal sapphic romance and then it progressed and kind of got darker and darker but i don't want to say too much more than that because i feel as though you will get so much from this book if you don't go in with any knowledge whatsoever i just had the best time with it it was very unhinged very intriguing very fun i loved the characters in there and yeah i i am on the hunt for more books like this one and so glad that i picked it up so those are all of the books in which i read in the month of april i hope that you enjoyed this video and i hope you read some good books too as always thank you ever so much for watching and i hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing you have on to day or night until next time bye <laughs>